Good morning. It's Sunday, April 5th, and uh, we're going to do a little experiment today. But let's first take a look at the aloe vera's here. It's lavender bloom time, as you can tell. But you can also see that the uh, aloe vera transplants from this time last year are all doing very well. See, they all have their They're all flowering. You and the woodpeckers just love those. Uh, but let's just do a quick look about. Aren't those pretty? They're all over the place. Yep, the aloe vera are really beaming. And I gave the uh, Moringa oleifera, a haircut about three or four weeks ago. And you can see that from where I cut it, it's got a lot of new growth. And it'll shoot up like crazy over the next six months. And of course we have some of the pods that are still getting ready to produce seeds. Goji berries are doing really well. I need to spray them with some neem. I've sprayed them with this milk stuff, but the powdery mildew is a, a bit of a, a hassle. We've got some um, radishes that are blossoming. I'm hoping to use radishes as a ground cover. Mr. B there is enjoying some rear radish flowers. I can't imagine there's many of those around here. But as you can see, the goji is kicking butt. And then we have the um, purple berries of the red Malibu spinach. Of course, we have more radishes down there, and onions, Egyptian watching onions, um, Etoy onions. But today what we wanted to do is I wanted to show you that we had planted a bunch of potatoes in the worm pile. And over here we put red potatoes, if you remember. And then over here, yep, see, goji berry is doing okay. It's getting little sprouts, the little runners that are coming up all over the place. this all about? Oh, maybe it fell from another plant. So in any event, today what we're going to do is we're going to look and see what happened to the red and purple potatoes that we planted. And over here was the, the purple ones. So we'll dig those up and we'll see how well they did and um, see if it's a good idea to continue um, that trick where you put, cut up the little potatoes, throw them in the worm pile, and then um, as, as you go, uh, as they start to sprout, go ahead and replant those in the other parts of the garden. It's a pretty simple method. I'll tell you ahead of time, it did work. 
So um, we'll do that reveal today. So today what we're going to do is look at some potatoes. Watch these lavenders. And a lot of bees. They're about ready to go to bed tonight. Good night. So here's what we're looking at. Every Saturday, I take out of the freezer the stuff that the greens and things that have been frozen and waiting to be put in the worm pile. This is the worm pile. And for perspective, there's a Home Depot bucket. So, but notice that there's stuff growing in it. This is not supposed to be there. And uh, over here. So, let's put that down for now. But what had happened was, you know, these russet potatoes, I bought them at the back of Bashes. In the clearance sale, and I cut them up, and I swear for six months, these have been rotating in and out of here, and they have not been decomposing. But then all of a sudden, recently, um, they were starting to grow. So that's kind of strange. Um, why don't they decompose? And also, um, you know. Why don't we could we could use this technique with some like purple tomatoes, some a decent tomato. These russets are already pretty cheap, but look what I'm doing over here. I rake away the top mulch. And you can see those potatoes, you know, there they are. See, that's not supposed to be there. So, if they like to grow here, maybe we could take advantage of that. Here's the uh, phenomena is that the sprout just grows out of the long wedge. And, uh, you know, why do that with russets? But you could do with those purple ones that costs, you know, $10.99 a pound. And you have a simple little way of growing potatoes. But let's uh, take a look at my worm pile here. So, put away all the mulch. See those potato wedges? They've been around here, I swear, maybe five, six months. They just do not decompose. All right. This is what you do, right about in the middle, sink in your metal rake and push. See all of those worms? Just chock full of life. And you can see these uh, potato shoots. Now that's not supposed to be there. And these potatoes, if those were decent potatoes, that would be pretty cool. But see, there's all sorts of worms. So you, you don't need a bin and rotate bins and also, if it rains really hard and these guys don't like where they're living, they can always try to get into a side bed. I 
I allow them to escape. It's a prison, but they also get fed uh, every Saturday. You see all of, all, all of them. There's a lot of them. They're all waiting to eat right now. So, what I do is I kind of build a little valley in the middle here. I don't, I don't try to disrupt them too much. Okay, so the next step after dividing the uh, two halves, and they all go hide rather quickly, is to uh, put down some carbon mass. And here's some leaves, Makuna leaves, that I got from last week. Little pieces that are really great for the worm pile. So um, next you'll see is that there. And I'll show you the step after that. So you get these Makuna leaves that I put down. And that'll give uh, something for the scraps here. So I'm gonna, I have two different piles. So I'm gonna grab this one right about where the half is. And hold tight. And then dump the other one on top of there. And a lot of coffee grounds and banana peels, things that have thawed out. You never wanna put frozen stuff in here. You, just, you don't wanna get the worms frozen. So I let it, I put it out early in the day and let it thaw out. So we'll leave that there for now. And as far as the next step uh, is the bananas. So I got a bunch of carrot bananas from the back of the store. And I cut them up. So I got two different one piles. So I divide them so that they each get half. Then pile one gets its bananas. And this is the real treat. If you wonder why the worms don't leave, this is like the chocolate on the pillow uh, in an expensive hotel. These guys really like their cut-up bananas. So this is what we're doing today. We're going to be planting these potatoes in the earthworm piles. And you've seen these little red potatoes before, but I just want to keep them separate. So I'll cut these in half. Well, there we go. Here are the potatoes that I cut up. Look how incredibly purple these are, the ones. They look purplish from the outside, of course, but who knew that they were like a beet inside? I have no idea what they taste like. I'm just learning about these. But those are the purple ones. And of course, these cute little red ones you see all the time. They're just darling. I like these a lot. So this is what we're going to put in the worm piles. And so these, I'm going to get them to grow. Hopefully these won't decompose. But the idea is to get them to start like the russets were. And so now the technique that it's all in there. You get the bananas, the greens from the cuttings around the yard, and just, just put it over like that. And then you just you see all the worth earthworm castings, it's just like a big mound of earthworm castings. And they'll work on that during the week. Then I take this stuff that protects it, what I call the evaporative cooling material, because that will get in the summertime, we'll get that all wet, and that will keep it all nice and cool. But as you can see, there are some potatoes there that 
they just don't keep decompose those russets. So, and we're going to put some more of these rough things. These are actually from wild lettuce. What looks like huge dandelions. And then I take some sand and worms need sand to get that the food through their gullet, through their intestines. So I put like a half of one of these in there and the sand, they'll munch on the little grit, see? But they kind of need that. Save the other for the other worm pile. And then I go and I put some water on top of it. Like a half, of, about two gallons. That's good. So, let's go do the other one. So that front one, remember, is the purple potatoes. So, now this one, the back one will be the red potatoes. So, you'll see how I do this one, very much like the last one, but since we're doing an experiment, we got to do the, we got to do this one right. So, you know how this works, you move the top covering aside, and move the old potatoes out of the way. These ones that just refuse to decompose, but they do like to sprout eventually. Seems like I had them in there for about four months. Okay. And then we'll just move that in half, push half of it to one side and half to the other. And we need some more of those greens. A bed of greens. Yep, that's primarily faux tea and uh, broccoli leaves that I'm putting in. So now we know that we want to put in the uh, cut the refrigerator freezer goodies. I'm gonna toss in the bananas. Get out of there. There we go. Okay. And we look for the smallest dry stuff. Usually I have leaves, but for now, I'll just rake in some of this carbon, dry carbon stuff. That will suffice. All right. Let's not forget the potatoes. So now we're going to do the red potatoes in this one. I 
and move the half over the top, the other half over the top. Okay, then we do the covering. See how fast that is? That's not doesn't take long at all. No fuss with bin, bins and stuff. So these guys, these old potatoes, I want to toss those because those are russets. Not only they're really cheap, but I worry why they don't decompose like they should. Okay. And a couple other things. We'll put some more of these dried sticks on top. All right. Then Move it around, that keeps the birds from getting at it. And it also provides, when it gets rain and wet, a, a cooling agent for evaporative cooling. So that's good. And then we have our water here. Oh, let's not forget Mr. Sand first. So why are we doing the sand? It's because the worms need sand grit to get that through to clear out their intestines. So it's always good to add sand. And then we got the last half bucket. And there you go. All right, so what we're gonna go do today is we're gonna go look and see the potatoes. Remember the red potatoes and the purple potatoes? Well, we're gonna go see how well they're doing in the wormhole piles. So it's getting a little bit darker, but I think we might have enough light to pull this off. But this is a good little area, but that I never thought the radish would grow to be so darn big. But let's forget our, let's remember what our mission is. So we want to see here in the worm pile if there's any growth. And then over here, so we've got to be real careful. Over here, oh, look at that. Here's something. Gotta be real careful here. All right, so I got another tool for this. And we'll just see, these are the red potatoes, remember that? And uh, darn, if that little guy's not going. That's good. So let's put that aside here for right now. And then what, do we have any other potatoes going? No. Well, there's one. So, I'm gonna have red potatoes over here. So that was the red potato one. Let's do a quick check to see how the purple potatoes are doing. Oh, 
Look at all of these aloveras. They all love those little yellow flowers. And of course the lavender. So, over here is the purple pile. Now I see something right there. So let's just, but I'm thinking that this is from the big, yep. Those are from those pesky russets. Those are so cheap at the store. We'll throw that off to the side. And basic idea is to see if we can see any purple potatoes growing. Oops. There we go. What do we got over here? Ah, there we go. With the purple potato lives. Right? So, looks like they're both candidates for this method of planting them. Yep. Yep. Purple potato, you guys. Look at that. That makes me happy. So, I'll move those into another part of the backyard. Let's just do that right now. And that way you'll know where I planted them in future episodes. All right. So I planted the red potatoes over here. You saw me do that. Now I'm going to plant the purple potatoes to the left and we'll see what happens. Well, one of them will go way back here. This is really nice, thick stuff. And then we'll do the same thing over here. And over here was the, the purple ones. So we'll dig those up and we'll see how well they did and um, see if it's a good idea to continue um, that trick where you put, cut up the little potatoes, throw them in the worm pile, and then um, as, as you go, uh, as they start to sprout, go ahead and replant those in the other parts of the garden. It's a pretty simple method. I'll tell you ahead of time, it did work. <laughs>